All right, what does Aaron want? Been out and about, have we? What's wrong with your shoulder? Yeah, it hurts a little. Yeah, maybe a lot. What'd you do? Well, I tried to arm wrestle with Catalo. Yeah, maybe that wasn't such a great idea. I was just curious to see if that new arm of his was as strong as it looked. Turns out it really is. <laughs> you arm wrestled with his new metal arm? My guy. I gotta go. Hey, let us know when you want us at those cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be... It's gonna be now, basically. Uh, alright. Well, let's get this party started. Beta has been given a good, good, good amount of time. Welcome back. Hello, Aloy. Hey, Gaia. So, uh, me and Beta, I guess you heard what happened. Yes. I am continuously impressed by the complexity of human relationships. Despite the unpleasant circumstances that led to your quarrel. I am pleased to see you have both found an agreeable resolution. Well, two heads are better than one, right? Yes, I believe so. Are you ready to depart for Cauldron Gemini? Or we can continue our conversation, if you like. Uh, yeah, tell me about our progress. So, about Beta. I never really saw the difference between us, until now. She's been through so much, completely alone. You have both endured many hardships, different in almost every respect, yet equally remarkable. I like to think of you as two miracles, born of Elizabeth Sobeck. Three, then. Let's not forget about you, Gaia. <laughs> How was Alva settling in? As soon as she arrived, Alva was eager to study the data in the archive. A particular file soon caught her attention. Information about a machine assistant devoted to keeping living spaces neat and orderly. I informed her that once I am empowered with the abilities of Hephaestus, I may be able to design such a machine. Sweet! I'm sure she'll like that. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! We get to get some convenient robots to help people out. Man, the, the, this society, <laughs> this world's gonna thrive after all this. When I set out to find a way to bring you back, I never thought we'd be here, like this, among friends. They have all come a long way with their improvised educations. Varl has suggested that one day we might extend this model to more tribal inhabitants, once the biosphere has been stabilized. Yeah, that's not such a bad idea. As long as you're the one running the lessons. Hey, her and, well, I mean, I guess it would be her completely. Uh, I was about to say, with Apollo. Thieves. What do you think Ted would have done if his life extension treatments had worked? It seems he convinced himself it was his duty to guide future humans. Given the tribal nature of new humans, and his ability to use Omega clearance on the terraforming system, I imagine he would have convinced one or more tribes to worship him as their patriarchal deity. Okay. Yep, glad that didn't happen. Yeah, that would have been also awful. And he probably would have, like, sabotaged the system in and of itself. Aside from Gaia Prime and Thebes, there was one other underground facility that was sealed before the Pharaoh Plague reached it. Elysium. The place where Zero Dawn staff and their families went to live out their lives. Do you know what happened to it? Elysium was designed to provide life support for 100 years. My data indicates the facility went offline well before then. Did the Pharaoh Plague find them? Unknown. My connection to the facility was abruptly severed. 
Aw, oh, man. I wonder what's up with that. Either that's like a big plot point, or... It's just one of those mysteries they won't talk about. So what will happen to this place while we're at Gemini? All systems within this facility will continue to operate. As Minerva will no longer be masking this location, the facility will be exposed to detection. Though without my presence, it is unlikely to attract attention. Let's hope so. Yeah, let's hope. Gaia? What was Elizabeth like? Her presence is interwoven with my memories. The moment I came online, she was there. We exchanged greetings, names, then set to our task. It was the first of many conversations. I enjoyed being in her company, listening to her stories. She was my creator, my guide. Your friend. Yes. When I reviewed the data on your focus, I was saddened to learn of her fate. Though I am glad she made it home. I deeply wish she did not have to be alone. She was okay with that. She gave all of herself. Did all that she could. Thanks, Gaia. Right, we we had already heard that line, but like, you know, it was highlighted like we hadn't listened to it before. One more. Well, what's our whole plan to capture Festus? So our plan to capture Festus. Let's go over it again. As you wish. Thanks to Beta's test, we now know that Hephaestus will not respond to your alpha clearance. Which is why I got Ted Pharaoh's Omega clearance. Correct. While you were gone, Beta constructed the transport rig and pulse generators. When we get to Gemini, I will need to be installed on one of the facility's cores. The second core is for Hephaestus. Using Omega clearance will allow you to trap it. And then you'll be able to absorb it? Not quite. You will need to manually remove Hephaestus's malicious code before the merge. How long will that take? Because the work will be split between you and Beta, it will take approximately 4.5 hours. And during that time, the others will create a distraction for us using the pulse generators, right? Correct. They will each take position at a cauldron door and fire off their device. The energy surge should mask our activities until the merge is complete. And then we'll have everything we need to defeat the Zenus. Sounds like a plan. A shame we didn't get that, uh, secret weapon up and running just yet, huh? Let's go. Okay, people. It's time to head out. I'll get everyone together. Hell yeah, our whole little gang. We're so lucky that Sunwing didn't blast us with plasma. Oh, these two cores are actually really close to each other. All right, connections in place. Booting up. Beta, Aloy. I am fully installed on this core and ready to connect to the Cauldron Network. It's good to hear your voice.
Errand, everyone. Fire your pulses and sound off. I'm at my cauldron. This thingy, it's blinking. Did I do it right? In position at my cauldron. My pulse generator is blinking also. That means they're working. I'm in position and mine is too. Mine as well. Okay, radio silence until I give the all clear. Signing off. Gaia, let's cage the beast. I feel like to the cauldron network now. I feel like for Katal, this is an arms on situation. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime, activating Omega clearance. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime, activating Omega clearance. Clearance confirmed. Initiating containment sequence. see some combat up close. They're on to us. What do we got? Holy fuck! That thing came out blasting! Oh, a behemoth. Uh, hi, look. We can't have this. Whoa, 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 whoa! He can't just fucking run up on me like that. It scares me. I'm in a bad area. Holy shit. Okay. And your whole little front panel here is a weak point. That's rough, Ravager. Oh my god, you're alive? That was a little cocky. Oh, hey, 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 hey. What do we got? We against acid? Hey, Get a hand over here. Uh, I'm dealing with these things, you know? I love how the gnat has left me alone for two hours and it's back. Just in time to mess with the story content. You two okay? The Festus couldn't make it easy. This is fine. I like how contingency thirteen F was run the fuck away. Sorry, there was something I needed to do. You were talking before I left? Still breathing. Aloy, Hephaestus can't escape, but it must have fled... ...deeper into the facility. I'll drive it back here. I'll get the cracked core fixed in the meantime. Keep her safe. Keep her safe, Varl. All my life. <laughs> you know, had to run back to finish our line there. 
All right, let's chase him down. Whoa! Wait. Well, I guess we don't go in there. Yeah, Murphy's Law. Wow, that is rude. I'll find another way over. Yeah, it's called gliding. All I'm asking is that Beta makes it all the way to the end of the game and beyond. That's it, game. Give her, give her a chance. It's some kind of production chamber. Festus is up to something, all right. Is he gonna make a slaughter spine? Is it trying to build? I don't know, but I'm gonna shut it down. I bet those metal carriers will lead me to where it's getting materials from. I bet that's where Festus is hiding too. Follow the conveyors, you got it. in the materials bay I think so I have two choices to go you son of a bitch all right we'll go left machines are making a beeline for another chamber I better follow them oh my god knock down enemies by using explosive power attacks or attacking their legs but is that a thing just shoot their legs and they fall down? Because I have not been doing that. Like, on purpose. What up, fuckface? Get in here! I know you see me! Yeah, come on! You can go through the shield, I can't. Hmm. Yeah. All right, fine. Fuck. I try to be clever and just latch on from over here, but fine. I'll I'll work for it. I've managed to rewire most of the components in the core, but the energy processor's cracked. Without a way to fabricate another, th there's no way I can fix it. Okay, um, let me think. What if you bypass the processor, connect it to the power node? I think that could work. I think it could. Here come the leap lashers and one long leg. You basic machines won't stop me. You'll just annoy me. There should be a node you can override near the central platform. Thanks. Maybe I should take these machines first. Strike from above! That's really tragic that I missed that component. That's where we're making it work. Alright, how many of you fuckers do we got? We got the long leg over there on the left. 
And one more Leap Blasher. The Leap Blasher can't do shit to me from over there, so I'm fine. Nice. Your sharp shot arrow. The fucking it's knocked down, JK. It's gotta get up and fall back down. Loot, loot, loot. Very important stuff. How about you don't execute that contingency? Just join back with your mother. Yeah. Oh, Plowhorn. Oh, great. The machine's on the way. Beta! Hephaestus has locked me out of the node. Any ideas? I'll see what I can do. Hey, how you doing? I shot you low! Calm down there, Leap Lasher. So can the Tremor? I was about to say, can that fucking Plowhorn get up here? And I don't think it can. Fucking bombed me. Something scanned me, and I don't like that. It's probably just a radar pod. I nice strike, fucker. Fantastic. Thanks. It sounds like it fled to another chamber. Well, I better not get comfortable. Yeah, we're on our way. Just because you can fly to or flee to two different cultures doesn't mean shit to me. Great. Festus covered the floor with lightning. I gotta find a way over it. Aloy, more machines keep coming. Please tell me you're getting close. I'm working on it. I've been smashing through a lot of machines on my side, too. I guess Aaron's missing out. Aloy, I'm making progress on the bypass, but I, I need something to hold the cycling module together. Maybe a ligament from one of the machine carcasses? Right. O or some luminous braiding. And you could reinforce it with a conversion cylinder. For increased connectivity! I, I think... I think we can do this, Aloy. Beta's so dead. We make too good of a combo together. Uh, 
like this? Okay, hold up. Let's, yeah. Let's see what's in the next area. We got some purge. We got some spike snouts. Some red eye watchers. That's easy peasy. Yeah, yeah, I killed your friend. What about it? Is that an apex? No, it's not an apex. Spike's not. But I don't need its help. Let's, uh, let's play some traps. Yeah, hold on. Tripcaster. Where's the... Here we go. Tinker's Pride. Oh, those aren't explosives. Fuck. Oh, here we go again. Oh, that just is so good. I'll try to get your access back. Whoa, no snipey. I agree, burn. Woo! Scary. Still got a sack I can shoot, buddy. Where's your third? There you are. You know, on the off chance I need the tail. You want a melee? Let's fucking rumble! Oh wow, you lived that. There. Node access restored. Now you can override it. Work? You did have nothing. Midis, okay. Places to hide. Uh, Namely, I just registered a huge energy surge back in the production chamber. Something big is happening. Here too. Everything's glowing. 
machine that Festus was building. It must have finished it. Oh, it's, it's powerful, whatever it is. I'm almost done with the core repairs. Should, should we come to you? Maybe no. I distract the machine if... No, Theta. Just stay where you are, okay? Handling the machine's my job. It's gonna be a, uh... Oh, what the fuck was this thing called again? Um, it's gonna be a slaughter spud. Story-wise, we haven't fought a slaughter spud yet. Well, that's rude. I'm down for that. Bar breaker. This is not good. A week against Frost, you got it. That's not weak against Frost at all. We did it. We discovered the worst fucking heavy weapon in the game. I think so. It's done. You did it. Uh, there, there should be one more note to override. Good. Stand by. I'm sending Hephaestus back to you. Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Things to gather. Thank you. At least it wasn't an apex slaughter spine. No more hiding, Hephaestus. Got it. Hephaestus is back in the core. Make sure it stays there. I'm heading back. The fuck is that way? Because of you, Beta. I'm glad you came along. And you, Carl. We couldn't have done any of this without you. Back at you, I'm assuming that's the way out. There might be like loot over there, but I truly, we really don't need that much more loot at all. Am I going the right way? Absolutely not. Fuck. I was following the marker and it was pointing in this direction. Uh, 
Oh jeez. Oh, that's hilarious. The way I uh, the way I was like, I wonder what's that way, is actually where I was supposed to go. Uh, anyway, so obviously this is the part where Zenith comes in, captures Beta, then we like shoot her with an arrow because we want to respect her wishes. Or she just gets captured. Either way, there's no way this is gonna work without Far Zenith coming in and ruining it even further. But if it does, you know, hey, fucking. The bypass is done. I'm down for it. Akora stable. Festus is 100% contained. Now we better get started with the merge. It's all set up. Gaia, establish the link, please. Okay, to complete the merge, we need to excise Hephaestus' malicious code carefully. Aloy, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> this is so dramatic. We're just waving our hands in the air. Sunwing override. And here's the Zenith to ruin it all. Well, hello, redundant copy. You cost us quite a lot of time. Oh. Ah, fair enough. And squash that bug while you're there. Varl, no! Bro, leave my companions alone. Ooh. <laughs> nice try, Varl. Actually, just run, Beta. Kill Varl. Varl! No. <laughs> you are ruining everything. We can't lose two people. Come on. Finally, Tilda, get Gaia and Hephaestus ready for transport. Tilda! I failed. Hush. All is not lost. Tilda! What huh? the hell are you doing? What? Uh, no, I can't even see her! <laughs> I wasn't expecting the Tilda betrayal to come without us, like, working for it, you know? I thought we were gonna have to, like, talk her down. And she's just like, no, hi, actually. Beta. 
I've had a thousand years of feeling bad, so like, I'm gonna help you. Fuck! Varl! Varl! Please, tell me she got him out of there alive. What's up with all of our Nora dudes dying, man? Zelda, ah, Zelda's house. You took quite a hit when Gerard attacked you. I imagine you must still be in a great deal of pain. I can assure you that we are safe. The others can't detect us here. You mean the other Zeniths? You must be Tilda. I wasn't sure if... Beta would have told you about me. Where is she? Alive. And while she isn't where she wants to be, not in urgent danger. We must discuss how to get her back, of course, after you've shaken off the cobwebs. When you're ready, take the stairs down the hall and, and come see me. In the meantime, I'll make breakfast. Breakfast? Okay. <laughs> From what? Are you gonna cook it yourself or are you gonna get the machine to do it? I'm intrigued. I'll give him credit. I'll give him credit. I expected that either Beta would be captured or that she would die there in that mission. Instead, it was Varl who died and then Beta also got captured. Maybe Varl will be like left in a state of like just being heavily injured. I hope so. Cause while like story deaths are inevitable he really was like the Nora connection he was also our best bud throughout a lot of things and I really just hate when they die can we even look <laughs> they shouldn't even let you do this like, this should be blocked. But yeah, we're literally back here at her house. It's just got a really extensive underground section, apparently. Jeez. What is this? Just a few favorites from my collection. Rescued and stored here just before I went off world. Take a look, if you like. I'm curious to hear your impressions. My friend is dead. Beta and Gaia are gone, and you want me to look at old paintings? Don't be so quick to dismiss the comfort we can find in art. Or the insight we might gain. Sure, yeah, we can examine your extensive collection of stuff. Woman reading a letter. Johannes Vermeer. 1663. My favorite pairing on the left is Woman Reading a Letter by Vermeer, a true master. And on the right is a forgery, Woman Reading Music, which fooled experts into believing it was a priceless original. Early in my career, I became fascinated with such deceptions. Eventually, I developed scanning software that could detect fakes with unparalleled accuracy. Is that how you made enough money to buy your way onto the Odyssey? Oh, no. I made my real fortune later. What we got here? Bruh. That's so fucking scary. Oh, there's machines above us and we just hear them moving around. <laughs> Selene and Endymion. She's the goddess of the moon. Whereas he's a simple shepherd. Beside her is the god of love, Cupid. So she's sneaking up on him? 
more like visiting him in secret. The torch that Cupid bears represents Selene's undying infatuation with him. Though the two must remain apart, her love will forever burn. Huh. This is Rembrandt painting Jeremiah, a man in mourning. Mourning what? His home. The ancient city of Jerusalem. He foresaw its impending doom, but could do nothing to prevent it. So instead, he saved its treasures from destruction, just as I saved these works. You could say we're kindred spirits. No. Rembrandt Van Rijen, 1642. Rembrandt's The Night Watch, by far the most famous painting my homeland ever produced. It was commissioned to honor a militia made up of influential citizens. I guess you must have been an influential citizen. In my day. But not as influential as you've been in this new world. Huh. Game recognized game. She knows, you know. She knows a little bit about us than her peers probably do. A portrait of the painter, Rembrandt's son Titus, depicted in the habit of a monk. I don't get it. Why would someone like you, with infinite resources, care about this painting of a boy in a hood? It's not the image itself, but the feeling it conveys. The face is bright and defined, but his eyes are downcast, heavy with misfortune. And the background seems to swallow all light. The painting is infused with a sense of loss. I guess I understand how the painter feels. <laughs> yeah, that's relevant. Ship crossing into the unknown. I guess you're familiar with that. Indeed, which is why I appreciate this composition in particular. Though waves and wind threaten to destroy the ship, it perseveres, clinging to the light even as darkness closes in all around it. Is that what your journey was like on the Odyssey? Trying to cling on to a little bit of light in your heart? Stunning, isn't it? Paintings weren't the only masterpieces of my people's golden age. This is Von Vianen's lidded ewer. Molded from a single sheet of silver. What was it for? How like Elizabeth you are. <laughs> Function over form. Its practical purpose was less important than its meaning. Von Vianen created it in honor of his late brother, who himself was a famous silversmith. A memorial? Yes. Such beauty from sorrow. Hmm. Well, I guess that's everything we can examine. Yeah, maybe not. A lot of weight on his shoulders. Oh, no comment from Tilda. She's pulling out her own hair. Out of madness, out of grief. It's hard to watch her suffer. All right, well. Wait, can we learn about some of these other ones? There's a lot of these like stone murals that she that we can't examine or have her I'm tell so us about. I've got more important things to worry about. We both do. There is much we are trying to save. Not the least of which is in that vault. There's nothing wrong with savoring such treasures for a moment more. Or come upstairs and we'll get down to business. Your choice. It looks like fire gleam. But I guess it's not. Yeah, I'm not like the 
super into like paintings type. I mean, I like paintings. I like art. But yeah, I definitely would never start like an entire underground bunker full of uh, million dollar or billion dollar paintings. But hey, if she wants to see into the feelings of all these things and be a decent person to help us out in the future, I'm down for it. There you are. Feeling better? How did you find us at the cauldron? And what did you do to everyone right before I passed out? All business, I see. Well, suffice it to say we were keeping a very close eye on Hephaestus, knowing we would need it at some point. Your ruse didn't fool us, and as for my little trick, it was an overload of the senses, accompanied by an energy discharge. Gerard and Eric were only momentarily disoriented due to their shields, but it it rendered you unconscious while I got you out. Perhaps some breakfast might steady you a bit? This was your house. The one you recreated for Beta in the data channel you shared. How perceptive of you. Please, this way. After everything your people have done, you think I'm just gonna sit down and have a chat with you? Yes. They're not my people. They never were, and especially not now. You shot off into space with them and lived with them for a thousand years before coming back. So what made you suddenly turn on them? Quite simply, this. I hold focus. You repaired it? But that means you've seen incredible things. What you've accomplished in two decades of life. A thousand years at my back and I haven't even come close. I'm sorry if I invaded your privacy, but I had to, in order to understand, to be enlightened. You truly are Elizabeth's blood, with her drive, her sense of mission, her integrity. Watching all this shamed me for the company that I've kept. Having seen it, all I want is to help you. Even if it means stopping your friends? Especially so. Please, sit down. Eat the damn food, Aloy. It'll help. There. That's better. Now, we must recover Beta and Gaia at all costs. By now, you must know that Gerard intends to use Gaia to reboot the Earth's biosphere. Remaking this world to specifications that would only suit us immortals. This process will kill every living thing on the planet. He calls it a clean install. Not if I stop him first. Not if we do. And once he and the others are gone, we can work together to fulfill Elizabeth's dream. I'm sure Beta told you that there's a build of the Apollo database on board our ship. A complete collection of human knowledge. With that and Gaia, we could do everything Elizabeth wanted. Heal the biosphere, educate the people of this world, uplift them. Create the world she imagined. I'm down for all of that. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. From what I've seen, your friends are invincible. I do wish you would stop calling them my friends. And they're not invincible. In fact, a friend of yours has found a way to defeat them. 
Silence. Silence. Mm -hmm. oh, he's been a busy bee, building an army powerful enough to crash through Gerard's precious base. Yeah, Regala and her rebels. Even now she's preparing a final march on the Tanakh the capital. When she wins, she'll have the entire tribe under her control. Yeah, we can't let that Hundreds happen. Of warriors and machines to throw at the base. She's been duped. They'll all perish, of course. But it should be enough to break Gerard's defenses and allow Silence to kill him. Along with all the others. Using the new weapon he's developed. Yes, he's found a way to circumvent our shields. Truly an exceptional man. He's planned for everything. Except you and me. You see, while his army is battering down Gerard's doors, you and I will sneak in through a back way, one that only I know about, while Silence and my friends are busy battling each other. We'll take back Beta and Gaia. I told you I want to help you. I mean it. Hey, all right, our game of a billion questions. You said Beta is not in urgent danger, so what are the Zeniths doing to her? Putting her to work. Merging Hephaestus with Gaia. A difficult, time-consuming task, as I'm sure you know. They will compel her if need be, but her life is not in danger. She's the only one who can do it. Because you people made her to be nothing but a tool. Gerard's idea. Not mine. They always viewed me with suspicion when I attempted any form of kindness towards her. That's why I created the data channel. A virtual place where we could speak in peace. Well, why'd you cut it off at some point? So this channel you shared with Beta. None of the other Zeniths ever found out about it. Gerard believes he's the most cunning of all of us. Even after a thousand years, he still can't imagine that I would outwit him. The channel allowed me to interact with Beta away from their mistrustful eyes. It offered us a chance to be ourselves. Until you cut off all contact. Yes. Though it pained me. I was worried that our meetings would do her more harm than good. Well, she felt like you tossed her aside. I was afraid the others would find out and punish her. She may not have had the comforts of friendship anymore, but at least I ensured she was safe. I know it seems harsh, but you must believe that her well-being has always been paramount to me. Well, unless they kill you off too, you're immortal, so you've got a long time to deal with that. And Beta, she's only going to be in like her 20s, so <laughs> she's also got a long time to get over things. I know she's going to be like really fucking pissed at us that we didn't kill her but that's tough shit we literally lost Varl <laughs> like a moment before imagine killing two of our friends and then had we killed Beta they would have been storming this whole valley trying to force us to do it they'd be looking for Tilda ridiculously so whereas they can now they just uh, they chill in their base until we storm it obviously uh, we're gonna stop fucking Regala from killing the Zanacht base. Because we can probably just get... a uh, Hikaru... to help us out. Uh, but I'd like... To, I don't want his people to, like, die in mass. Why did you make the data channel look like this place? I built this house as a shelter to weather any storm. A safe place. Not just for me, but... for the art stored below. Cultural artifacts of incalculable value. Truly some of the greatest achievements of human civilization. And you wanted Beta to see them? Yes. Her upbringing was so cold and technical. I thought if she could experience Vermeer and Rembrandt, it would bring something else into her life. A heritage every bit as valuable as the scientific and technical data being drummed into her. I'm sorry I had to cut off contact, but I'll never regret sharing this house with her. She needed its shelter even more than I did. 
Yeah, I don't hold any of that against you. You know, again, obviously it sucks that you, like, cut off contact, but, like, uh... It was better for her to have gone through a smidge of, like, human normalcy and contact than none at all. My old focus. How did you find it, let alone repair it? When we encountered you at the Hades Proving Lab, Gerard saw you as a redundancy. I knew better. You were a revelation. After your dramatic escape... Bravo, by the way. Gerard and Eric assumed you were dead and gave up the hunt. I wasn't so sure. When the others were busy, I returned to the lab and searched for any trace of you. That's when I found this little treasure. Not easy to repair, but certainly worth the effort. As I watched your life unfold, you were like a splash of color on a worn canvas. What Liz was, and more. Did you show it to the others? Of course not. It was your actions that inspired me to defy them. It's worth noting that if I hadn't found it and watched its contents, I wouldn't have known to save you at the cauldron. You'd be dead. So I should be grateful? Yes, a little bit. If you like. <laughs> so you know all about me? What about you? What would you like to know? Well, start with your life on Earth. When I was eight, terrorists flooded my home city. Thousands drowned, my parents included. I was one of the few who survived. My guardian <laughs> sent me to boarding school. <sighs> Among my peers, I was the strange girl, the orphan to be avoided. All because of circumstances beyond my control. Oh. So we're a lot alike, huh? Aren't we? You are an outcast. But you didn't let that stop you from getting what you needed. Neither did I. I climbed my way out of desolation and used my wits to build a fortune. First from the technical analysis of art and the detection of forgeries profitable expertise in those days but as it turned out the software i developed was even more useful for counterintelligence from there it was only a short step to gathering extremely valuable intelligence on my own you were a spy more like a service one could turn to for information i had to remain anonymous of course to protect my privacy but despite that anonymity, Far Zenith inevitably sought me out. What happened when Far Zenith approached you? They painted an irresistible vision of humanity's future. One where we need not fear illness or death, where we explored the furthest reaches of the stars and thrived. It was only later that I realized that they only intended to bequeath this future to the rich and powerful. By the time I finally figured it out, the walls were closing in, Faro's machines were devouring the Earth. So I accepted Far Zenith's invitation to a birth on the Odyssey. I wanted Liz to come, but she had nobler plans, as you well know. Yeah. I think, uh, I, I, I think I'm happier that Elizabeth stayed behind and helped the world rather than, like, escaped. Although it would have, you know, a mix of both would have been great. You guys faked the Odyssey being destroyed, so maybe, like, if you had told people, hey, there's still spots open here, I don't know. But, but I guess at that point they were far gone. So you didn't know the other Zeniths were monsters until it was too late? I, I knew some of them were, certainly. It it wasn't until we were off planet that I understood the true scope of their greed. I was grateful to simply be alive, but the others became obsessed with a kind of effortless immortality. They built a colony where machines serviced their every need, where any memory or fantasy could be endlessly savored in virtual reality. I'm down for that. It wasn't life. It was stultifying. 
a pampered dream state. Oh, you're pretentious. As the decades passed, I withdrew more and more, alone yet again. But this time with eons to consider my mistakes. Now, finally, having met you, I feel like I have a second chance. To do what? Help you, of course. To fulfill Liz's dream, which isn't so different from Farzina's original vision. A better future for humanity. Well, I mean, it's definitely attainable. With Gaia and, and Apollo. But I don't like her her tone on the, the policy of of how like, oh I didn't like that they had machines taking care of their lives and they spent a lot of their time in virtual reality. Lady <laughs> Miss Lady in a video game. I don't need your sass. That sounds like a pretty decent life. Minus like, you know, the the corrupt morality and willing to kill like you humans to attain your any goal. That doesn't sound too bad, really. That's probably what's going to inevitably happen anyways in this world, just because it's just, it's maybe not like in the way that they did it, but like having access to virtual reality, being able to experience any memory or past or other experience at any time while your life is being taken care of automatically by machines, as a base minimum of life, that sounds fantastic. And then you can be like, all right, go do other stuff, right? I'm down for that. I would happily have a life where shit's taken care of at the house by, by machines all over the place. I can, at home, I can go into virtual reality, like, and this is like full virtual reality. Like the virtual reality they have is gonna obviously be fucking leaps and bounds over what we actually have currently in reality. Uh, probably, I don't, I don't know if it was like, you know, it goes to the extent of being able to feel what's going on, but even just being able to see and basically have like flawless reality all around you in terms of like vision and seeing it and, and hearing it, that's fine with me. But yeah, then, then, you know, you, 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 you just say, all right, you still got to do work, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be for money, but like progressing humanity or like doing some kind of thing, that's fine. There's plenty of work to do. Uh, <laughs> I just, I hate, I didn't like the way she was talking about that. Beta told me your colony was destroyed. That you came back to Earth because you had nowhere else to go. It's true. After we reached our destination, a planet in the Sirius star system, we spent decades building a new home. The physical constraints of Earth, the boundaries of mortality, gone think of what we could have done with it. It might have been a utopia. Instead, we stagnated, absorbed in effortless comforts and virtual realities. It took a cataclysm to finally yank us out of our stupor. What happened? A massive geological event. We knew of instabilities in the planet core, but we underestimated them. By the time the collapse was upon us, it was too late to stop it. Only a few of us made it to the ship in time. We set course for Earth, the only safe harbor left to us. Which you decided to make unsafe for anyone else. Not me, Gerard. He believes it's better to wipe the canvas clean than work around the smudges. No more primitive tribes, no more combat machines, only a blank slate to do with as he pleases. But we will stop him. All we have to do is get into that base. I can see how society would take a while to like slowly develop when you, they basically get there and can just kind of be... <laughs> they don't actually have to develop the world at all. <laughs> it's like, oh, we came here, immortal, and with virtual reality. It's all we need, guys. I, I'd fall under the same trap. What exactly is your plan to sneak into the Zenith base? We will make use of a lesson I learned from an early age. Always know 
your exits. In this case, a place where Gerard's new construction meets the ancient foundation, a passage that only I can access. When Silence flings his army at the base, we will enter through this back door, bypassing most of the fighting. The distraction will provide us with a window in which to rescue Beta and Gaia. I've got a good feeling we're gonna end up working with Silence because we need his weapon. We need his way to take out shields. And I don't want R Regala to win at all. She's a terrible fucking person. Once we're inside the base, where will we find Beta and Gaia? Here in the command center. By then, Gaia will have been reunited with all of its subordinate functions, including Hephaestus. What about the alpha build of Apollo on your ship? A simple matter of recovery once the others have been dealt with. With that in hand, we'll have everything we need to make this world as it should be. Yeah, as long as you don't have some kind of ulterior goal when you say how the world should be. How do you know about Silence's plan? He isn't the only one adept at spyware. You hacked his focus? No, he's too careful for that. But his subordinates? <laughs> Not so much. He gave additional focuses to the tribals he branded the Sons of Prometheus. The ones working with Regala. By tapping their focuses, I learned about most of his dealings. The distribution of override technology, the arming of Tanakh rebels, and the secret pact with Regala to attack Gerard's base. But how did he come up with a weapon that can take down your shields? That's the one thing I haven't been able to figure out, but however he did it, I'm quite certain it will work. With it and the Tanakh army, victory seems to be within his grasp. Such a shame he'll be disappointed. Regala's only interested in killing Hakaro and waging war on the Karja. What does she have to gain by attacking Zenith? It's the price she must pay for her war. Without the ability to override machines, her little rebellion would have languished in the desert. So she trades with the Sons of Prometheus. Machines to help her overthrow Hikaru. In exchange for an assault on the base. Pride has deluded her into thinking she can actually survive such a battle. And all without ever knowing who the Sons of Prometheus really answer to. Yet, for all of Silence's brilliance, still he underestimates you. Yeah, he does. The blind spot is what will allow us to take Beta and Gaia right out from under him. While hundreds of Tanakh are cut down outside. You know, <laughs> one thing that hasn't been brought up is the fact that I've severely cut down on the Rebels' resources. Uh, I took out their outposts, their camps. I killed the Sons of Prometheus leader and took out their major base of operation. So, like, your plan uh, is already sabotaged by me. Sorry. So you knew Elizabeth. What was she like? Liz was everything she was. I see in you. And more. Your ingenuity, your determination, your moral compass. You've managed to distill her greatest qualities and make them your own. I'm not asking about me. Tell me about Elizabeth. What was she really like? The honest answer is that I don't actually know. For all the time that I spent with her, she always kept a part of herself locked away. It was like that from the moment we met. Hmm. So when you met Elizabeth, she was what? Distant? Aloof? Not aloof. Not exactly. It was a summit in Paris about machine learning. A touchy subject in those days. Because regulatory authorities were just starting to clamp down on AIs. Liz gave the keynote address. She had already achieved great renown for her work in automated environmental reclamation. 
but in her address, she was just starting to imagine the next step, an AI-driven system that wouldn't just act on its programming, but actually take responsibility for its sphere of influence. To care about life, not just follow orders. Revolutionary stuff. I was fascinated, and I wanted to meet her for a long time. I watched her after her talk. She had spoken with such moral authority, such empathy. But after that, she retreated. I could tell she felt uncomfortable with all of her admirers. It was as if giving the talk had cost her something. I didn't want to be a pest, so I planned my approach carefully. So how did you finally approach Elizabeth after her talk? I picked the right moment. The morning of the next day, right as she came back to the conference, she had just had her coffee. She was fresh, rested. It was like she had braced herself for the onslaught of colleagues. I asked if I could walk with her, then put forth a question about her talk that I thought was intelligent. Her answer made me realize it wasn't, but she was very welcoming, almost as if we were previously acquainted. It was only halfway through the conversation that I realized she knew exactly who I was. It was quite a shock to me. My business was trafficking in secrets, and I took great pains to protect my anonymity. So that was Liz, perpetually one step ahead. I came to view our meeting as a metaphor for our friendship. She always seemed to know me far better than I knew her. I guess I know the feeling. All right. I guess that's uh, it. Time to tell you your plan sucks. First Varl. Now Hikaru and the Tanakh. Your plan would wipe out an entire tribe. There has to be another way. We are in an admittedly desperate situation, but I assure you there isn't. Remember Zero Dawn. Elizabeth's sacrifice. Sometimes many have to die for a new world to grow. If it looks impossible, look deeper. Wait. The data channel. It still exists, doesn't it? I need you to open it. Let me talk to Beta. Impossible. We might be detected. It's worth the risk. There is another way, one where the Tanakh survive. But we won't. If the others... If you want to help, open it. Whoa. Well, this is weird. What are they doing to her? Virtual reality dissociation. The manual merge of Hephaestus will take hours upon hours of tedious micromanagement. If she resists the work, they run simulations to induce feelings of isolation and despair. Beta, can you hear me? You're alive. They're watching me. I, I can't hold it this for extra protection for long. You should have killed me. No. No, look at me. I'm coming for you. I promise. Okay. I just need you to hold out a little while longer and work on the merch. I think it can 
can be done. I'll contact again when it's time. Can you hold on? As long as I know you're coming for me, I can endure anything. All right. I did as you asked. Now I think you need to tell me what you're planning. I'm going to take Silen's army away. I don't need it. Only the weapon he made to penetrate your shields. And how do you propose to get it? Ask him nicely? With Aragala and her rebels, he won't have a choice. We'll be his only option. Only option for what? What did you tell her? That is between me and my sister. Hey! She finally calls her her sister. Silent's only option for crashing that base. I'll tell you the rest later. But first, there are a couple of things I have to do. Oh. And what are those? Lay my friend to rest. And then I'm going to use the override that Beta gave me at Gemini to put an end to Regala's rebellion. From the air. Wait. Since you insist on doing things your way, I know of something that will truly help you make a grand entrance with the Tanakh team. The ancient Horus Titans still possess electromagnetic energy cells as part of their arsenal. Drop one of those on Regala's army and they'll receive quite a surprise. Ooh. So go, do what you must. I'll come to your base if you manage to bring silence to the table. Not if. When. All right, I'm down to fucking and drop an EMP there. on them. Aloy. Aloy, is that really you? Yeah, it's, it's me. Where's everyone else? We're all... At, we're, we're back at base. What happened? It... It might be easier to explain in person. I'll try to join you there when I can. Okay. I, we'll wait here for you. It's good to hear your voice, Aloy. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are alive too. Ah, oh, God. Poor Varl. Used up for the story. They very easily could have just injured him. And left us worried about whether or not he would survive. Just to let you know, I'm now patched into your focus network. Oh, uh, hi. Great. I take it the other Zenus can't hear us? Of course not. And they don't know about your base either, in case you were wondering. I've sent you data on the Horus energy cells you can use against Regala's forces. Reach out to me when you're ready to acquire one. Understood. All right. Horus energy cells. Aloy. All FAS Bore 7 Horus combat platforms included EMP cells as part of their arsenals. Acquiring and deploying one shouldn't be difficult, but we'll get to that in a moment. The bigger, active, uh, big, uh, the bigger issue is activation. Barring extraordinary circumstances, such as interference from Hades as you experienced last year, all Horus munitions are inert, deactivated by Minerva's decryption regime during the 21st and 22nd centuries. To render these EMPs operational, we'll have to skirt those efforts. I've devised a way to do so without causing unwanted repercussions. A bespoke code signal that should enable all and only such devices in the vicinity. I've transferred it to your focus. All you have to do now is to send it out. A Zero Dawn communications relay should do the trick. I believe you refer to them as Tallnex. I've chosen one for you that is centrally located, now marked in your HUD. Simply override it as you would normally, and my signal will automatically transmit. Every EMP on every horse within a 500 kilometer radius should come online. On to acquisition and deployment. Horse units manufactured EMPs in their fabrication base, and then subsequently loaded them onto their multi-purpose appendages, or tentacles if you like. Because the cells were designed to be detachable, enabling them to be fired or thrown at enemy forces, their fittings should be quite light. The only way to attain them will be through the air, but it sounds like you've already, uh, you already have that covered. When you reach one, it should come loose with a hearty yank. Rust or corrosion notwithstanding. 
There is no need to prime the cell as you were designed to trigger on it as they are designed to trigger on impact. Once you have one, all you need to do is drop it in the target area. I'm sure Regal and her minions will enjoy the experience. All the best, Tilda. Alrighty. So <laughs> look at this new, new quest. Do you have any other new quests on the map currently? Just the one. So I think uh more than likely she wants us to use this tall neck that's been locked off this whole time for activating her little signal and activating the horses such as like one over here and there have been a few other ones that we've seen but I don't like have them really memorized it's kind of funny I don't really I don't really like the idea of sending out an activation signal to Horus units but we'll assume that it'll be largely fine What do we got here? Sterling Malkits, Yisida Enigma. Uh, all the makings of the next big thing, a much Ballyhood acquisition from an art historian turned technologist, no less, bleeding edge science and a great narrative to boot. The application was called uh, YCITT, after Young Christ in the Temple, a well-known Vermeer forgery. By creating a perfect holographic scans of individual layers of a painting and comparing them to a vast library of artistic works, it was able to identify fakes with an unprecedented level of accuracy. But it was clear to Sterling executives that the program's ability to match and identify patterns had broad applications outside of the art world, as a tool for security, counter-surveillance, or digital authentication. It could prove just as revolutionary as it had in its intended role. Which is why they were willing to sign a nine-figure agreement for it, blasting news of the deal to every outlet in the tech media. Two years later, the project collapsed in a chaotic jumble of lawsuits, recriminations, and accusations of sabotage. So what went wrong? Who was responsible? And most importantly, what happened to the underlying technology, which by all accounts was far more powerful than the vaporware label applied by the disgraced executives? <laughs> it disappeared just in time for... Tilda to use it for all of her other purposes. Alright, well, now that we have officially been here as part of the story. We can actually explore places that were a little bit more closed off and get the loot, I'm assuming. Uh, I'm trying to find the main staircase. Here we go. Hmm. Curious. Yeah, I'm not leaving here until I get access to this. Well, at the very least, story-wise, Beta actually took things pretty well, all things considered. All she was like was just like, you should have killed me. But yeah, all right, I'll wait for you. She could have turned that into a whole fucking thing. A whole thing of, I trusted you. I can't trust anyone. You know, gone through the whole dramatic process of talking about how she feels betrayed and all this stuff but instead she was just like oh actually we can make this work let's see retrospective rotterdam 2033 cyber attack by far-right anti-migrant group purity action europe reversed key instructions to the city's new storm surge barriers rendering them fully open during a massive extra tropical cyclone the resulting flood cascaded through the city in a matter of minutes, effectively wiping it from the face of the earth. I was one of the lucky ones, recalls survivor Tilda Vandermeer, who was eight at the time of the attack. My family was wealthy. We had a watertight vault for some of our most precious belongings. 
My, mo my father locked me inside when we, we went to look for my mother. So I waited there in silence as the waters rose, praying every moment that, moment that my parents would return. They never did. As horrible as that sounds, Tilda was lucky indeed. In addition to her parents, the flood killed more than 100,000 people, including approximately 40,000 climate refugees from... Yeah, that part of her story caught my interest as well. Fucking... When I was eight, my family was killed by terrorists. Like, holy damn. Er, uh, old world was a little bit of a mess. Hmm. I'm not sure what I'm missing here. Because this kind of just takes us to the roof and there's no holes in the roof to let us drop down into here. There is a hole on the side that I could try and like air control my way down. Nope, that actually isn't a hole. Also, we didn't have any of this food. Look at this. There's even like some muffins or something in there. I bet you've never had the muffin. You potentially have never had bananas either, Aloy. <laughs> she didn't eat at all during all that. That was that was a moment of, of connection. I climbed the rooftop and there is a window with a Drop down point. Um, I didn't see. I didn't look to see where they actually dropped off. We're just gonna kind of guess here. Uh, where the fuck is this flower? There it is. Okay. There's a window. Aha! That we missed. Okay. Away for later. Thank you for the supplies, Tilda. They'll make for some decent money. All right. So we are now in the almost in the end game. We gotta override a Sunwing and start flying around all these new places. But I guess first things first, we'll go back to the base, get everybody caught up as to what happened. If we're lucky, maybe Var will be there, just recovering, but probably not. <laughs>